Hi, this is question number one from the June 2015 AQA Decision 2 exam paper. Um, on this page over here, we're given an activity diagram for a project and each activity requires one worker and we're given the duration required for each activity in hours. Our first task is to complete what's called the precedence table. So that's this table over here and all we're doing in this table is quite simply um, we are just saying what needs to happen before each of these activities start. So for example activity A, B and C nothing needs to happen before they start so we can just put a little dash here, here and here but in order for activity D to start um, A and B would need to be completed first. In order for activity E to start, well, B needs to be completed before that can happen. And for F to start, B and C need to be completed first. For G to start, D needs to be completed. For H to start, all three of these, D, E and F, would need to be completed first. And in order for um, I to start, both G and H would need to be completed and similarly for J to start G and H would need to be completed okay so that's the first part of this question completed okay part B says find the earliest start time and the latest finish time for each activity and insert their values in figure 2 so we're given a little guide here we're saying that this value here is the earliest start time and um, this value over here is going to be our latest finish time and the middle value tells us our duration. So A, B and C, can the earliest start um, time for them is just going to be 0. Let's just pin that down. OK, so um, that's going to be 0 for each of those. OK, um, and well D um, can start well, after 7 minutes or after 5 minutes so it needs A to be completed and B to complete to be completed before it can start so it needs to start after 7 minutes so both A and B would be completed after 7 minutes ok in order for E to start um, B needs to be completed so that's going to be after five minutes and for F to start both B and C need to be completed so well it can't start after four minutes it has to wait for B to be finished so it's going to start after five minutes okay in order for G to start well D needs to be completed so D will start after seven minutes um, the earlier start time is seven minutes and then add another six minutes to that so that's going to be 13. In order for H to start, each of these three activities need to be completed. 7 and 6 is 13, 5 and 7 is 12, 5 and 8 is 13. So it needs to be at least 13 minutes before it can start. Okay, so that's for D and F to be completed first. In order for I to start, um, well, G and H need to be completed so 13 and 5 is 18 and 13 and 6 is 19 so it's going to be 19 minutes at the earliest and for J to start again it's going to be 19 minutes at the earliest okay so that's our earliest start time we're now going to put our latest finish time so this is the latest time that an activity can finish without delay in the project Okay, so if we have a look at these first, we need to be careful here because J is going to finish, um, well if it starts after 19 minutes, we add 9 to that and that makes 28 minutes. Okay, so that's the latest time we can finish without delaying the project, which means I, although 19 and 8 is 27, um, it's got the luxury of having a float here because it can also finish after 28 minutes because that's not going to delay the project at all okay so um, we can put 28 in for both of those okay 
Now we can work backwards from here and we're looking for the um, latest finish time. Now um, in order for well, G needs to finish after 19 minutes otherwise it's going to delay the project okay otherwise it will, de it will delay um, J uh, and also H needs to finish at the latest after 19 minutes otherwise J is going to be delayed here okay and then if we have a look at D well G and H lead on from D so if um, if we do 19 take away 5 that gives us 14 and 19 take away 6 gives us 13 okay so I'm going to put 13 in here because if it finishes any later than 13 minutes it's going to delay H okay and E well again if that finishes any later than 13 minutes it's going to delay H and F if that finishes any later than 13 minutes that's going to delay H okay um, and if we go back over here then um, A needs to finish on time so at the latest of 7 minutes otherwise that's going to delay D there's not a float there and um, 13 take away 7 sorry 13 take away 6 is 7 13 take away 7 is um, 6 and 13 take away 8 is 5 so the latest that can finish is after 5 minutes otherwise that's going to delay F and, and similarly over here the latest that can finish is after 5 minutes otherwise that's going to delay F Okay, so we've got our earliest start times and our latest finish times um, all put in. So, um, going back to our question, we've now done part B, we've put those values in. Part C says that list the critical paths. Now, a good idea um, here is to just put a circle around anything that doesn't contain a float. Okay, so I... 19 and 8 is 27 so there's a float of 1 over here but 19 and 9 is 28 so there's no float here um, that contains a float whereas this one doesn't 7 and 6 is 13 so that one doesn't contain a float 5 and 7 is 12 so that has a float of 1 5 and 8 is 13 so um, that has a float of 1, I'm just going to put the floats over here, so that's got a float of 1, that's got a float of 1, that's got a float of 1, um, that doesn't contain a float over here, that doesn't contain a float, nor does that, and that contains a float of 1. Okay, and um, Right, so my critical path, well, there's going to be two paths here because I've got A, D, H, J, and I've also got B, F, H, J. They're both going to be critical paths. They're going to be paths that um, they can't be delayed at all, otherwise it would, the whole project would be delayed. So A, D, H, J, and B, F, H, J. I'll write those over here. A, D, H, J and B F H J okay part D says find the float time of activity E uh, and we worked out that activity E has a float of 1 so so the float here equals 1 and then part E says using figure 3 opposite draw a Gantt diagram to illustrate how the project can be completed in the minimum time assuming that each activity is to start as early as possible okay so um, I'm now going to um, fill in these values on my Gantt diagram now an idea here is to start by putting in the critical paths so I've got ADHG sorry ADHJ even so I'm going to put those in first of all So ADHJ and that's ADHJ marked in. I'm now going to 
put in B and F over here okay so that's um, B and F done as well I'm now going to mark in um, C E G and I now it says that we want to start the earliest that we can so C can start after zero minutes and it lasts four minutes so C is going to go from change color and it's going to be four minutes okay we don't necessarily need to mark in the float here um, we could do if we wanted to but I'm not going to bother so um, C is going to be that there um, and it lasts four minutes and then E starts after five minutes and it lasts for seven minutes so I'm going to mark E just over here Oops. and that lasts for seven minutes so it's going to be five to twelve and that's going to be E and then we've got G from 13 to 19 sorry that's uh, 13 to 18 um, 13 and 5 is 18 so that's going to go from and that's going to be G and then I is going to go from 19 and it's going to last for 8 so it's 19 to 27 it's 27 okay and that one is G and that one is I okay um, and if I wanted to I can I can just sort of show that there's a float here as well okay and um, <coughs> so that's the earliest um, start times for each of these now that means we have now um, completed figure three okay so these are all the questions that we've completed now F says given that there is only one worker available for the project find the minimum completion time for the project well if there's only one worker available we're told at the start um, that each activity requires one worker that means all of the activities um, have to happen consecutively so I just have to line them all, all up in order so I can have A, D, H, J and then B, F, C, E, G, I all in that order um, so I can just add these um, durations together so I've got 7, add 5, add 4, add 8, add 7, add 6, add 5, add 6, add 9, add 8 so we're adding all those values together so that's 12, 16, 22, 29, 37, 42, 48, 56 65 so the sum of all those is going to be whoops 65 okay and then part G says given that there are two workers available for the project we want to find the minimum completion time for the project and show suitable allocation of tasks of the two workers okay so um, we have to um, do a little bit of muddling around here so if I move some of these around so I know that G, H, G and H are going to happen after um, D and E are completed so I want these to be juggled around so they take the least amount of time possible so um, I'm just going to show you an example of a scenario that works. Okay, so over here I've just drawn a diagram. You don't necessarily need to draw this diagram, but I've just drawn it to try and help you understand 
um, how I've made my decisions here. So um, the earliest, because H needs to start after D, E and F have finished, um, we can muck around with all of these tasks to try and get them to finish in the shortest possible time. Um, and the best way that I can arrange them is ACF and BED. There might be other solutions as well to this, just bear that in mind. So the earliest that I can get H to start then is going to be after 19 um, hours. Are we talking about hours? Uh, Yes, okay, so the earliest that I can get H uh, to start is going to be after 19 hours, okay, and G um, can also only start after 19 hours. And because I and J both need to start after H have finished, I've got 19 um, plus the 6 here, um, which makes 25, so the earliest time that I and J can start is going to be after 25 hours, which means that um, J... Um, because that's the longest activity, that's 9 hours, 25 and 9 makes 34. Okay, so J, the earliest that it can finish is going to be after 34 hours. Okay, so over here we've got um, 34 hours is going to be the minimum completion time. And a suitable allocation is going to be, well we're going to have ACFGJ. So A, C, F, G, J, and we're also going to have B, E, D, H, I for the other worker. B, E, D, H, I. Okay, so that's that one and that one completed. Um, and I'll just clip back over here. Um, hopefully all of that made sense. Again, you don't need to draw this part, but we just need to work out um, and it, it probably does make it easier if you just draw it in anyway. Um, and that's it. Okay, thanks very much for joining me. I hope that made sense and I'll see you next time.